Hey Captain Hooter, how's it going my friend? This is Chef Kiko from Below Deck Mat 5 and this video it's a shout out for his new show Wake and Bake and I just have a look, it's pretty fun and pretty cool what he's doing with this amazing plant and I know already a couple benefits to use and consuming this plant like there's a lot of omega 3, 6 and 9, a lot of protein, it's amazing what these seeds can do it and also I think has an amazing flavor reminds me like almonds when I use in my in my cooking and I really hope you guys have fun watching him and all the best from Brazil and cheers Isa it's Captain Hooter Hello Bom dia Dobre Utra Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's happening, everybody? Hooter here, coming to you high and alive, trying to get my practice on. I'm getting ready to go hang out with Danny Raposo, stoner chef, and he plays one hell of a game of golf. He has his own golf tournaments. So I'm out here trying to get a little practice on. So hold on one second. Let me see what I got going here. Oh, don't tell me the first time I come out here and I hit the ball, I hit it like that. Whoa, that was, pr whoa, I hit it way out there. I think I can do it again. Let's see if I can get it in the middle. Here we go. How about if I miss it all together? Let's try again. Uh Oh, I'm in trouble. I think I got to get it down here on the ground. Oh, there we go. I've actually got, look at this. I'm hitting the target. Boom. Unbelievable. I picked up seven points. All right, listen, before I embarrass myself anymore, check out this great video with Danny Raposo, and I'll get a little bit more practice in. Here we go. Uh-oh. I'm going to need a lot more practice, I think. Ooh. Hola, hola, everyone. Captain Hooter here once again, high and alive. And I got the guy, the man, Chef Dan, the stoner chef here. What's happening, buddy? How are you? Not much. How you doing, Cap? How you doing, brother? Long time no see. I'm excited to come see you again soon, right? We're only a few, only a few weeks away, right? So, dude, I am so excited. And you know, the last time, the the place where we actually got to meet face to face was at Canaduro, uh, That's up right. in Porto. <laughs> That place is unreal, man. That was a great event. Yeah, that was uh, my first event ever in in the in Portugal, the mainland. Uh, mm -hmm. We did one out in the Azores in October last year, and then I was invited to Canaduro, and that's how I got to meet you. I mean, we were friends before, but we never got to meet face to face, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We have some some similar friends like Jonathan Hirsch and and my boy Kiki that year. Kiki, I was gonna say, I got, I got, I got Kiki opening the show, dude. How about yeah, that? Yeah, which is, which is perfect. That's uh, I met Kiki uh over at Canadoro, and then uh later that night, I think the Saturday, we ended up uh going back to his place and making this massive food uh for a bunch of uh, I think about seventeen or twenty people. So uh, it was quite uh quite the time. He's a great guy, man. Great oh, guy. God, great I would have died to have been there oh, for that dude that be is... this time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man dude i'm excited i gotta tell you i am i'm very excited about this this event coming up uh next month uh both of us are are are, are involved in the event which is awesome um and uh we can talk about that in a second, but you know, yeah. I have I have a lot of people here. They're probably seeing you for the very first time, and uh, you know, they they they've heard you about you, but maybe have not seen you. So let me let's just take a, a little um, 
a little journey. Let's just say that uh, you and I just met at Canaduro right outside. I, I walk by, I go, dude, you smell good. What are you smoking? And, and oh, hey, and, and if, if I were going to ask you, so what do you do? Who are you in the cannabis industry? So I am, um, I am the stoner chef of Canada. Um, I started uh, cooking with cannabis about 15 years ago because uh, I was kind of in a wrong place doing a lot of pharmaceuticals. So I wanted to get off that and cannabis was the one thing that helped me. Um, and then from there, it took me about three years uh, from there, I just started advocating uh, for the plant and showing people that there is different ways of using this plant instead of just the buds. And now I own Stoner Chef Inc. And we have a few divisions here in Canada. And now I'm looking to move up to Portugal, where I'm from, obviously. Uh, it's a nicer thing there. But I mean, like, yeah, I just started... I, I'm a chef by trade, obviously. I was on a few shows, uh, Master Chef Canada, Dragon's Den, Chopped, uh, a bunch of Canadian shows out here. Um, I'm sure Master Chef is shown in Portugal also. So, um, but yeah, that's what kind of got me going. And then literally with the theme that I got from the show, it was very easy for me to transcend into the cannabis industry because everybody kind of knew who I was being on TV. So um, I don't do really TV anymore because nobody wants a stoner on TV anymore, uh, especially, <laughs> especially the producers and production companies. They don't want to get in trouble. So not yet. Um, not yet. Yeah, exactly. Not yet. Not, not in Canada, at least, you know what I mean? Which just sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there, I've been traveling all over the world pretty much, uh, and, you know, educating people on food and what to use in the, of the plant, like what's consumable, everything's consumable, yeah. um, but what is very good to eat and what you can use for other products like body products, bath bombs, dog, uh, you know, like animal feed. We can do all kinds of stuff with, with this plant. And most people just go for the buds yeah. and use the buds. So I, I try to explain everything. That's why I'm coming back to Lisbon to the Expo, uh, Expo, the Port, Canada Portugal Expo in Lisbon, uh, to explain that, you know, you just don't have to use those buds, the flowers. You can use everything from the roots to all that stuff, right? So we're doing a little workshop um, about cooking with the whole plant. So I love that part terpenes too right yeah uh, no 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 no, no. I, I i get to open up the second day which i am i mean if you want to talk about perfect you're going to yeah. get to wake and bake with me on the second yeah. day we're coming in hard <laughs> and heavy and i'm going to spend uh, uh, a little bit of time talking to all these great investors all these great people that are involved in the industry about my expertise which is obviously traveling the world and seeing the very best coffee shops all around the world and uh, i'm going to do a session on best practices uh, of all of the herb houses coffee shops cool. associations dispensaries around the world so cool. there are some common threads about what what works well and uh things not to do and i'm going to cover just as many of them as i, I can I, that's, in my talk. that's important that's important because i have some plans out there and I need to know what can and what I can and can't do. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to be picking your brain when we get there, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. Oh, uh, dude, it's going to be great. And you're going to be there for some time ahead of time. So we're going to have yes. a chance uh, uh, to, to do some videos. And we're planning on doing some cooking sessions that we'll be yes. able to have on every, the show also. Every, oh. every morning, Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter in the store. <laughs> I got to tell you that I, I have got one recipe of yours that I've been thinking about for months. Yeah, um, candy bacon, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, God. You know, for as long as I can remember, I think it was my grandma. Was it my grandma used to do it? My grandma used, she, when, when I was a little kid, I remember she used to take, uh, and, and don't give away this recipe yet because I'm going to be upset, but I'm going to tell you what she did. She, she had raw bacon strips. She used to put yep. raw bacon strips out and sprinkle um, uh, uh, brown sugar on it mm -hmm. and then take those and put them in the oven. 
and just yeah. let them bake over. And that, so, so we had a candy bacon kind of a thing, Jones, that I've got from my childhood already. Yeah. And, and then we start talking about it being an infused version of, oh, God, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I'm so, so excited. Without, with that one, I'm, uh, I, I, I've worked hard on that one. Uh, I've come up with a spice rub called Nanya. Uh, it's the Nanya spice rub. So everybody asks me, what's Nanya, right? Well, what's in this thing, right? And so I'm, I'm like, it's not your business. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, let's say that the spice has got 16 different herbs and, and spices in it, uh, but it also has uh, cannabis flower and keef also in it, right? So uh, when you mix it together and you bake it, it's just a little bit of Canadian maple syrup, nice, the real stuff, not the Aunt Jemima. <laughs> right um, you know yeah. th you've got that benefit up there in canada you've got the best uh, maple syrup in the world uh yeah. you know we've had a couple of chefs on the show and one of the things that uh uh everybody seems to be working with now are are different types of terpenes that they're able to add into their 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 recipes for a normal person who is cooking normal meals on a regular basis and they want to evolve into this right where are they going to go shopping to get terpenes? And is there a way to, is there a workaround? Is there a natural workaround to some things? So here in Canada, I mean, I think, I think you can pick up some terpenes um, just at natural, because there's, you know, the natural, I'm sure there's homolistic uh, places out in Portugal that just sell flowers and botanical different things. Because I know in the Azores, there was a health store, and when I walked in, there was a wall full of these beautiful botanical flowers. And I was looking at some of the names, like the P. Lotus uh, flower, butterfly flower, uh, the, the blue butterfly flower. Uh, what else was there? The rose, all those terpenes that sh you can just grab. And it was funny because behind the counter, they had the CBD hemp bottles behind the counter mm -hmm. and it wasn't out to you can grab but you can grab these botanical flowers that have more of a high than the cbd behind the counter <laughs> yeah. and i looked at i looked at her and i says you know th th there's a lot of like you know active stuff in here that i can get you and she's like what do you mean and i'm like well there's more of a high here on the flowers than what you got behind the counter. It's kind of mixed up, right? Yeah. So here in Canada, I guess you can get some terpenes. Uh, there are terpenes being sold. Um, I, I don't think they're at the terpene part with the in the dispensaries yet here, but yeah. there are people experimenting. It's in the, you know, the native uh, dispensaries. They're way ahead of our government dispensaries. Right. Um, so basically, I mean, you can pick them up and you gotta remember, terpenes are a, a lot stronger than, yeah. than, so, I mean, it's just a little bit of a drop, uh, mm -hmm. that you need. And some of them are aromatic, uh, for taste, uh, you know, like I, I have a friend, which you'll end up meeting at the expo in Lisbon, Hugo, and he is a terpene, unbelievable specialist. Like the That's guy awesome. makes unbelievable terpenes um and that guy there is the guy to talk to if you really oh, perfect oh excellent well because yeah. i've been i've been trying to shop for things you know and i and like i was yeah. watching brandon allen and you know one of his recipes and and you know he's able to just grab his little dropper and there's a drop of you know lemony okay well, want, yeah. wow yeah. okay well i and and because i have i have like my terpene kit aromatic kit right okay uh for an example i have this one here oh has, cool yeah yeah okay so there's this, a couple of companies like that down here too that you can open up and there's like 12 or 15 bottles right and it's all different but those are but, craft companies They're right, not, right right and this is all for them. aromatic and and i use yeah. it it's a training for me it's training it's i i have to get the older you get you know you start to lose your senses of smell and mm -hmm. stuff so I'm trying to close my eyes and smell things and go, okay, very okay to carry off link. Got it. You know, and, and be able to go through them all. Um, but to have, I'd like to have this kit with all of the terpenes in it for cooking. Mm -hmm. 
right? Why not? Like, I mean, you can you can add if you you can add anything to food, right? As long as you know what you're doing. Sure. Um, so, like when I started with the cannabis, same thing. Um, you know, if you start, you don't know measurements, you don't know anything. You knock yourself on your ass when you eat shit that you're not you don't know, right? Like when I first started, I grabbed an ounce of weed and a stick of butter threw it in there, made it, and I made cookies that knocked me on my ass, right? Yeah. Like, each cookie was like 300 milligrams or something like that. And <laughs> for a first time, or, you know, you, yeah, so you, get, like, <laughs> you puke, you piss out of your ass, you do all kinds of shit, right? So, um, I, I, that's how it really started for me, was a friend of mine, that we walked into his house, there was peanut butter cookies on the counter. And I, I'm a freak for peanut butter cookies. So I waited for everybody to leave. I grabbed three of them. I ate fucking two right away. Oh, can I swear? Sorry. I didn't mean to swear. Um, oh, I, you can swear all you want to. Fuck that. Oh, okay. You can say anything you I want. Mean, Don't worry. Yeah. So we're hard, dude. We're, yeah, I we're grabbed fine. two. I munched on two right away. I was halfway through the third. And my boy Steve's dad walked in. He goes, he starts laughing. And he's like, oh. dude. How many did you eat? I says, well, this is my third. Why? And he goes, well, it looks like you're not going anywhere today. You're staying here tonight. And I'm like, but why? And he's like, because it's got cannabis in it. And I'm like, so? I smoke it. Who cares, right? Like, what's it that going to do? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, man. I laughed my head off for about two hours. Yeah. My gut, it felt like I did a thousand like you know those gut brunches things yeah. at the gym and my it was burning from laughing so much mm -hmm. but then when the others ones hit in oh was it horrible yeah i was confused i didn't know anything but when i woke up the next day i passed out obviously they put me on the couch i woke up the next morning <laughs> and i asked them what happened they said well yeah, you don't remember doing this, and you don't remember. And I'm like, I don't remember any. You know what I mean? All I all I know is I got a great sleep. And usually my routine was I'd wake up in the morning, pop my stupid oxycodone and my muscle relaxers, smoke a joint, and drink something or whatever to get my go get me going in the morning. Well, that morning there was no need for any of that shit. Like I felt like amazing oh, i, I kind of felt woozy still but it was like two days bef before i started to take my pills again so that that triggered something in my head i was like wow if i can eat one of these cookies but yet tone down the milligrams it could probably help me out on getting off and that's how it really started for me um that's how i ran into the cannabis so i mean i started learning and, you know, you, you fuck yourself up. Like, I, I didn't know <laughs> any of this, that. So I, I greened out a couple of times experimenting. Uh, but it took me about three years to really get to that, that limit that you know is perfect for you, right? You can still function. You can go on uh, to work and drive and do all this stuff. Um, it's, it's very important to find that, that sweet spot, right? Because, you know, you don't want to go out to work and then the next thing you know, you're all eyes rolled back in the head and you're sitting yeah. at work and your boss is freaking out at you, right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, for cooking, I started with the buds, obviously. Um, and then I started growing. Uh, and then, you know, you have all this extra stuff left over. So you start to think, right? Let's experiment. What am I going to do with these sticks and stems? Grind them up. I made tea. Right, mm -hmm. use it okay. for tea, or you can take a massive stock pot, take your stems, throw them in there, boil the shit out of them, use the water for stock or tea or coffee or juices. Um, you can use it in gummies, uh, anything that you can add water to for an ingredient or something. Right? Can I just stop um, you right there and yeah, just tell course. you that right now? All the people that are watching this and all the growers that are watching this, you're watching their eyes rolling into their head right now going, how many fucking stems did we throw away? How many, how many stocks? How many of those did we throw away? Absolutely. We threw them in the garbage. 
Yeah, yeah. And well, they were that, all usable. That's one of the things that I'm trying to educate people on. The whole plant is usable right from the roots to the top of the plant, right? So, like, those are just sticks and stems. After I would boil the shit out of those sticks and stems, they become soft, right? Um, you take them, you put them in a, in a, in a you know, a blender, uh, chop them up or make them into a paste. Um, and then you can use those in topicals, body bath bombs, body creams. So you never, nothing goes to waste. Right. That's the most important thing, right? So um, just like the roots. So mm -hmm. I had a license of a thousand plants at one point um, uh, that I could grow at home. So when I had all these plants. It's a big you know, home. Were, yeah, yeah. Well, I had a <laughs> farm, right? So uh, we had it on the farm. But uh, I do have a big house. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, literally, I started to, when they were ready, you know, what's the first thing you do? Oh, my, my trees are ready. You go to the bottom where the pot is and you just snap and cut it. You take the, bo the, the bottom, which is the roots, and you just kind of toss it away. Same thing. I was looking at these roots one day because I like to recycle um, the soil that I use in my regular garden. So as I'm giving nutrients to my cannabis plants, once they're finished, that soil has all this nutrients and good stuff. I'll just recycle it and put it into my tomato plants, my herbs and stuff like that. And it's got nice nutrients now to, for those plants to grow, right? So I throw the plant, the, the roots out. And then my boy looked at me and he goes, hey, don't you think that's like the brain of the plant? So it kind of dawned on me. I'm like, hey, you know what? There's like over 200 cannabinoids in this plant. So if you look at the roots, it starts from the roots. It starts from a seed, right? In a root. So it seeds, goes up to a root, and it becomes this beautiful flower full of medicine. But I look at it that the root is, you know, you got all those strains and stuff, right? I see it that each strain is a different cannabinoid. So okay. I started to think about, you know, how can I use these roots in something, once again, that I can consume, right? So I started to boil it, like I did the sticks and stems and use it as water. Um, and just that alone, when I would use that for drinking water, holy shit, would it, calm me right down uh awesome for inflammation swelling um there's some great stuff in the roots then i started to research that you can press the roots and i have a rosin tech uh heat press here mm -hmm. at home so i started taking these roots and pressing them for the terpenes that are in them. and let me tell you you're fucking awesome like Dude. you take a you take a little bit of that terpene oil uh, from the roots and just add it on a paper, add your weed to it, and wow, it blows your mind. Um, and we're all throwing these things away. You know what I mean? Like, why? There's so much money. If, but for instance, here in Canada, they're not allowed to use any of that shit. It's unreal. So they're taking they're taking the buds and anything that's left over, they need to um, destroy by grinding it with cat litter so the person who comes to pick it up to put it in the wasteland can't open the back of the garbage and grab whatever's there mm -hmm. so they grind it up with cat litter so it's no, you can't use it at all okay. and it's going into the ground you know into the you know, landfills right why there's millions of dollars there that we can have and use just from root sticks stems leaves um, instead of just the buds, like the mm -hmm. fan leaves, the big fan leaves, I use everything. So those big fan leaves, I love them. I dehydrate them. Um, and I turn them into fan flour. I call it cannabis flour. So if I'm making brownies, for instance, I'll take the two cups of regular flour and a quarter cup of this now, beautiful, like the ones you have behind you, uh, those beautiful leaves, dehydrate them grind them up into a, a fine powder and I'll add a quarter cup to that. So now you're mm -hmm. getting the fiber and everything in that beautiful leaf in your plant. And you're not just throwing them out, right? And you can juice them. You can use them, uh, fry them. You can eat them raw. They're 
they're amazing. Everything can be used, right? So that's basically how I started. I wanted to learn how to use everything and, and it helps, right? And a lot of people don't realize that, so. Dude, that is, that is epic. You know, I'm, I'm gonna ask you a stupid question and I think I already know the answer, but I'm gonna ask the question anyway. So I'm imagining when we're talking about the roots and you were talking about mm -hmm. pressing the roots, you also talked mm -hmm. about boiling the roots. When yep. you're boiling the roots and you created a water out of it, so you, it's, you have a drinking water and you said you had a feeling of a of, of calm kind Calmness. of feeling. So, yep. so it almost was affecting you like a broad leaf cultivar. So like an, almost right. like an indica, right? So it's, with the roots, do you see a differentiation between effects related to what type of species it was? So if it was a sativa plant and this and you boil the sativa uh, yeah. roots, are you having yeah. sativa type of effects with the water or with other things? I or found I found most of the stuff that I worked with was uh, the indica. So um, I love my pinks. When I grew, I did a lot of pink push mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. So, but I I found it's kind of similar. It doesn't really have much in the roots mm -hmm. but there is enough there right. to sustain something right? right um so basically like you're taking those roots and you're not just boiling them for a couple of hours you're taking a massive stock pot and just pretend you're going to do chicken stock right right same thing you can add your vegetables and all that stuff to your stock add the roots in there and I would simmer them overnight, 12 hours. Yeah. So by the time I wake up in the morning, that massive pot has now reduced half of the water and it's concentrated. The, the roots itself is very soft instead of being brittle now, right? Right. Um, does, so does, yeah, real quick, does this work with the same effect, the same uh, THC uh normal cannabis versus uh hemp or yes. cbd yes so yes. same thing so i've so, done i've done both right like i have a hemp grower here that i work with um i'm trying to get her to come out there but she can't uh but i have one that i work with her hemp, and it's the exact same thing we did i did uh with her roots i actually did uh a broccoli uh sorry a cauliflower puree root puree so i took cauliflower and the roots after I boiled them uh, and made a paste and actually made a beautiful puree out of cauliflower mm. and roots, right? So mm -hmm. uh, you yeah, add a little bit of garlic, some cheese to it, and it, it you know, it's uh, off oh, the chain. Okay, um, so I, a couple other questions. I'm gonna keep us moving along here because I know that it, uh, we, you've got a limited mm -hmm. amount of time. So, so I, right. I had a question I wanted to ask you when you were when you first became famous from doing these yeah. shows. What was the mm -hmm. first show that really got your name out there? A uh, Master Chef Canada, obviously. Master yeah, I Chef did that. Okay. I did that in 2013. And did you get high before you went and did the show? Every day. Every day. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Funny story about that. Um, I was I was just starting to get off my pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. when I did the show. Okay. Um, when they asked me what I was using for medicine, I told them that I was using cannabis, and I had a license, a prescription from the doctor at that time. Okay. Well, they went CTV here in Canada, Bell Media. They went absolutely shit bananas. Yeah. I said, no, 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 you can't smoke weed, right? It's illegal. And I'm like, but yeah. I have a license, right? I'm a patient. It's my medicine. So they got me stuck on back on my pills while I was on the show. Oh, no. But then I was, it was about a couple of days into filming. I was at my, because they gave me a hotel to stay at, um, an apartment actually. Um, for the eight weeks that I was there. And the guy above me was on the show and all I smelled was fucking weed. So I was like, wait a second here. I got a license. This guy doesn't. So I went right to the producers and I said, hey, look, you know, there's other people smoking dope and I got a license and I, and I can't. And you're yeah. putting me back on these bullshit pills. Yeah. Um, so that, right at that moment, I got my son to drop off uh, a pound, a QP of, of, of cannabis for me <laughs> uh, downtown. Uh, and basically I smoked the rest of the way. So 
Um, but yeah, I smoked. Uh, yeah, I, I was high as fuck on that show. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite show to do? Was that the best one? Or yeah, I, you know what? I think I think that was the funnest. I got to meet uh, a lot of people, good friends that I'm still with today. Uh, friends today on the show. It was the funnest, the best. Um, I was treated like a king. Like they gave us everything. Uh, they took care of all of our food, booze, uh, anything we wanted. You just had to ask, and they gave it to you, which was fantastic. Uh, the other shows I did was Dragons Den, sort of like the Shark Tank of the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. I did that, and uh, I ended up. That was nerve wracking, like hell. Because you got these rich guys in front of you, and you're trying to, you know, sell your company to them, and and uh, they ask you tons of questions, and, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, shit yourself while you're there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I ended up landing a dragon after that show. I have a prediction for you. I I see yes. in the future you on the very first Master Cannabis Chef show. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, I'd love to be one of the judges, to tell you the truth, because, uh, you know, I I have been doing this uh, not just here in Canada and all over the world now. Uh, so, I mean, I'm pretty known all over the place, which was would be a good honor if they had the stoner master chef uh, competition. I'd like to be that guy, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So. But, well, you definitely have the recognition when I was, uh, that was when you came into uh, Canaduro, the, the crowds parted yep. for you and uh, everybody knew who you were. And uh, that was, that was awesome. It's like, you made an you entrance. You got to make an entrance, business. right? Yeah, yeah, baby. You were styling too. You had that all going on. I had no nice. idea that you were going out with Kiko and the kids later, man. That would have been, uh, uh, yeah, I would have made I know, but this, this time when we're there, I'm there for a week, right? So yeah. you're going to be, I'm going to be teaching you all kinds of stuff. We're oh, going to be going live, right? On the way yeah. you can bake Absolutely. in the mornings. Yeah, uh, the stream so one live. We'll be, yeah, we'll be doing different every day. We'll be doing something different. I'm there for a week uh, with you. So I'm planning on doing some cooking with you, with Kiku, uh, with uh, Mila. Mila, Mila the Hash Mila? Queen is going to be with yeah. us. Yes, I'm super excited to meet her. Oh, dude. She's like Roberto. butter. She Umberto. is one of the, yeah, yeah. He, he's another one. Uh, he's actually one of the growers there in Lisbon, right? Umberto. Right. No, could you tell me more about him? Because you mentioned him before. I, I don't so know Umberto, I think he's the president of the Hemp Association uh, of Portugal, right? So he's a, an actual grower, a, a licensed producer uh, in, in Lisbon. Uh, and his, his plants are unbelievable, like, He's he's setting the stage for all of us. You know what I mean? He's gone through all the bullshit and all that crap out there. And he's pushing for the freedom of this plant. Uh, along with my partner, Grasa Castanho, which is uh, the one of the top university professors at the University of Azores. She's also one of the top 25 women in the world to listen to. Because this lady is one of the smartest ladies I've ever met. Um, and she's really powerful in Lisbon, Portugal, and around the, the areas. Because she's ran for presidency of Portugal uh, back in 2016, I believe it was. Um, and she made some really big noise by having uh, the first woman run for presidency of Portugal. That was her. She's very well known, and she is the one that's behind the Canna Portugal Expo that we're going to in June, right? Yes. Uh, she wants the government to be aware that it should be the person's choice to use this beautiful plant instead of the government restricting it. You know what I mean? And we should be able to use the whole plant um, instead of just the seeds and I think it's leaves there right now. Mm -hmm. You can't use anything else. You can't even do extractions in Portugal right now. So I, I mean, there's nothing yeah, here. CBD. It, makes me, it kind of, you know, why are you guys ass backwards? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like you guys are completely decriminalized in Portugal. So why is it against the law mm -hmm. to consume or grow? Like, it makes no sense, right? Yeah. Well, it does make sense. 
Well, it, it doesn't make sense. sense. Does it? Yeah. yeah, you know, I've, I've now interviewed several people, several people in different states and different countries who, you know, were literally the, the ones who helped to get everything legalized in the beginning and then witnessed the transition from that point on. And what is consistent in every single case is whenever there was this delay before legalization and then there was some sort of legalization, uh, all of the players were put in place by that time. Mm -hmm. And so when all of the, the licenses go out to uh, the first dispensaries, they yep. all, I'm sure if anybody ever did some great master investigation, uh, I know up in Canada, Jody Emery has yep. on her Twitter account posted, pinned right on the top is, uh, I think it's a list of a couple of hundred of the yep. top politicians, law enforcement people, Yep. and prosecutors who all ended up in the industry the and ended up industry. running them and of all making a ton of money. Not right now, though, because no. what, what the price, I was just talking to Mark Emery, he says the weed's going for $2 and $3 a gram. Yep. 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 Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, it's but, very cheap here. Um, like, even if you go to the native reserves, let's say those dispensaries at the native... I can grab a, an ounce of really good weed for like 60, 70 bucks Canadian. Wow. You know what I mean? And I'm talking yeah. really good, bud. like the, um, the actual Gorilla Goo number four, yeah. I paid $50 for that half ounce. So Dude, I mean, I, you guys are paying, you guys are paying like two, $300 or something like that for an ounce, yeah. right? Prices makes, here are much higher. Yeah. It makes no sense, man. No, yeah. it makes no sense. Um, like it doesn't take that much to grow a plant. You're just abusing, you know, the money, right? So they just want money from it, right? Same thing here. It was like that in the beginning. Nobody went to the dispensaries because the prices were crazy. Yeah. And then they just slowly dropped, right? So, um, but yeah, I guess if you were to go to, like I've never bought cannabis in Portugal. So I was always smoking the CBD flower. Yeah, there. Me too. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, if I guess if you were to go somewhere like Barcelona, I guess they sell it or stuff yeah, like that. Huelva. No, the, the place is Huelva. About an hour outside of Lagos. If you drive straight across the bottom of Spain, you cross over, and the first real city down there is Huelva. And yeah. I've been to what four, four or five of their uh, different associations and uh, become uh, proud and happy yeah. members. And they are all wonderful, wonderful yeah. setups and everyone just and several of them just as cool as any of the best ones that I've been to in Barcelona, which is still the the benchmark, really. Yeah. The the real impressive spots are all in Barcelona um, at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's another place that worries me because, you know, if they decide to, to do the little switch of it's perfect now because then they've had lots of time to, to examine switch everything. over and get everybody in there that they want right yeah so yeah 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 that's one thing all I'm, of the money i'm kind of worried this is one of the the reasons why i'm trying to educate out there in portugal especially the azores because you're not allowed to do anything in the azores they don't know none of the information none of the education they have no clue in the azores i know it sounds crazy right but i want to be that guy that want the, to show them that you know instead of bringing in these massive companies from canada us or whatever to come and grow your cannabis why the fuck are we giving our money away to other countries when we have some of the damn best farmers in all of the world and yeah. instead of them growing pineapples or bananas or sweet potatoes because, you know, let's let's be honest, at the end of the year, when that crop is done, they sell it back to the government and the markets and they don't make that much money. Right. So now if we were to get our research, it, develop it, show them that uh, we can grow it in, in, in the Azores, grow it properly, uh, testing all of it. And once they have all that information, let's slowly give our Azorians Portuguese people the opportunity to get more money or business 
by growing it themselves. Sure. And yeah. growing a higher quality product. Because, yes. yeah, see, that's right. the key. Sort of stick, you know, like bushy weed, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Quality is number one. Yeah. From now, you can't just take that weed, I'm saying. Like, if you're, let's say, a licensed drawer now in the Azores, you can't just take that weed and sell it. No, you got to sell it back to the government. And from, if it's if it's bush, then you're going to get two bucks a gram. If it's quality and really good, high potency weed, like I'm thinking five to eight bucks a gram, that would help, you know, bring in a lot of money for the Azores. Sure. Think they should have farmers stuff. markets. They should have farmers right. markets in every town and village. And the, oh, the, the, that's, the that's all the best boutique it. growers could come that's out true. with the killer killer and they could get the top dollar. And the ones who are think... just growing the swag can get the swag and people, you know, you can cook with the swag. It's just, just yeah. works just as well. You know, that was one of the things that Brandon, um, uh, Brandon Allen talked to us about was the fact that the, 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 the quality of the cannabis when you're cooking with it doesn't need to be that great. No, 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 no. You're, you're actually wasting like the cannabis, if it's really high end, mm -hmm. you're gonna get really like it's gonna be more potent, obviously, but the effects are basically the same. If it's a lower quality or a higher quality, you're still gonna reduce it, you're still gonna extract from it. So you're still gonna get the potency, even if it's a lower quality. Mm -hmm. Gotta remember, smoking it through your lungs, five minutes later, you're stoned eating it through the liver. So it takes a little bit longer, right? So, and a completely different buzz. Like yeah. let's, let's get, I, you've, you've eaten edibles, obviously. Oh, it's one of the only times I've hurt myself. I, I hurt myself the first time I used the volcano, the guy that, uh, get, I, I was actually at one of Mark Emery's place. Yeah. In, yep. uh, in, uh, in Vancouver and filled up that bag and they had, they had turned it as high as they could turn it. So it was just, I took one big hit of it and coughed in my lung inside yep. out. And that was supposed to be this new healthy way of smoking. And I was, yep. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe for three days from that first volcano hit. <laughs> and then the next time was drinking. I had a little drink of, and it was an Arnold Palmer, half and half of iced tea and lemonade that was infused. And it said, drink a half a cap full. I didn't read it that way. And I thought that was ridiculous that you would only drink a half a cap full. So I poured about a shot full Ooh. and I recorded it. Uh, and I had, I, about an hour later, I had to take a knee. I was, I was sitting working on my yeah. computer like this. And I, I suddenly started going. <laughs> uh, it's a lot, it's a lot different wow. when you're adjusting, right? Like, so. I always tell people low and slow. Like if you're a, a green guy, like you're just new at this, please, like two milligrams. You know what I mean? If you can and work your way up, like wait yeah. a week of doing two milligrams. You know, it might not get you high, high, but you still have to build that immune system up, right? Um, just don't jump into like 20 milligrams or 50 milligrams your first time, right? So, because yeah. it'll knock you on your ass hard, right? And that, that'll that turn a lot of people off also. If they go to consume something that is too much for them, they go through the greening out process and they hate the feeling, they'll never do that again, right? Yeah. So, education is very key, right? You got to show them that, you know, you can't do it like this. You got to slowly work your way up, right? So, yeah. um, but getting back to the Portuguese government, like yeah. letting us grow, can you imagine, you're not, you're not familiar with the islands, right? The nine yeah. islands, right? Yeah. Um, so can you imagine, San Miguel is the biggest island, I believe, and the most populated. Can you imagine now a company such as Afria or something like that in Canada goes to this little island and decides to put a million a million square foot place on there how pretty is that going to be when you're flying in the airport and the airplane and, and and you see the island and there's this massive facility on such a small little island do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and who where's all that money going to go to them not the government of like of 
of Portugal. They're going to get their money, of course, but most of the money will be turned into for Afria, right? So I, I don't want that. I'd rather have the small boutique growers, like you were saying, the smaller guys, you're only allowed to grow so much per year and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. So now we give us an opportunity for other farmers. We can have a thousand farmers, you know, doing top quality cannabis around the world that, right. and we could be one of the top people in the world or countries in the world for cannabis, right? Just like that. Just yeah. like that. Just, yeah. and, and, and then the money comes in, we're not so reliable on the European Union for help because we all know that the European Union helps the Azores to sustain their economy. They give them money every year, right? And so the government slowly, you know, gives it to this person or that person and they slowly need it for this and that. Maybe if we were to do this, we wouldn't need that money anymore because We've made so much money growing some of the top cannabis or hemp in the world that people are coming to us and we're making money from it. I'm getting phone calls like crazy. Right? Ah, okay. Well, oh. listen, my friend, yeah, we, we, we're going to do this again. We're going to be yes. doing a bunch uh, during the event. Uh, the event happens on the 18th and 19th of June. Of it's June. in Lisbon. Yes. It's Can of Portugal 2022. Yes. Uh, the, the title of the conference is On the Right Side of History, which That's I think right. is really cool. And uh, again, both of us are going to be there. We're both doing different programs, different sessions. I'm very excited to be part of this and I can't wait to meet everybody and yep. uh, we're going to wake and bake properly there <laughs> every, day, <laughs> For sure. brother, every day okay anyway yeah, every I'm, day. Not a boogie. I'm sorry no. I love you my buddy Hugs Peace, and brother. I'll see you soon I'll see you in like uh, what uh, probably 25 days I'll see you there it is fantastic I, I'm, I'm not going to eat until you get there because I'm going to be starving I, 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 boy. You're going to be skinny by the time you fucking get there, bro. I'll just. That's it. <laughs> I Peace, love brother. You, man. Okay. Mom. I'll see you soon. Peace. Ciao, Peace man. Out. Wasn't that a great interview? I can't wait to hang out with Danny next month at Cana, Portugal. It's going to be fantastic. All right, here we go. I just need a little more muscle on it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the one. That's it. Come on. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching our interview today. And we will see you on Saturday with part two of Mark Emery. It's going to be fantastic. I'll see you all on Saturday. Bye. One more shot for the money. Here we go. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter!